VHD treatment. Thank you, Doc. I'd like to thank the Society for inviting me to speak to you. I don't know how many of you all do congenital heart surgery, but uh, this talk is directed mostly at uh, junior surgeons and house staff training in congenital heart surgery. And uh, as most of you know, ventricular septal defect closure is the most common congenital heart surgery that we do. In, at Boston Children's, we do, in some variation of this, about 400 to 500 of these a year. I have no... Uh, <clears throat> I have no uh, financial interests or conflicts to disco disclose. Uh, basically, we'll go over the anatomy, current treatments, results, and some future directions. We've heard some innovative talks from several speakers about how they're uh, 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 <clears throat> innovating in treating these defects. So the anatomy, most of us are familiar with these uh, defects from uh, Wilcox and Anderson's books with the right ventricle cutoff. I think this is important because in yellow, you see the membranous defects. These are the ones that we traditionally closed with a patch in an in open uh, uh, surgical fashion. Again, the reason being the, a lot of the tricuspid valve apparatus, cordy, are adjacent to this. In addition, uh, the thing to remember is the penetrating bundle, bundle of his, and the membranous septum is very proximal, or very proximate to these defects. So these are the uh, defects that require precise closure. And uh, then there's a whole slew of defects, the muscular defects. I mean, the nomenclature varies from institution to institution. I come from an institution where Dr. Juan Prague is king, so we have our own nomenclature, but inlet muscular VSDs, some people call this trabecular or apical muscular VSDs, and uh, the outlet muscular defects, or at some institutions you call them anterior muscular VSDs. And finally, these doubly committed juxtarterial defects, which as we heard from other authors, there's a preponderance of these in China. We see very few of these in North America. So it's important to know where these defects are so you can choose the appropriate therapy for these babies. And uh, most of our babies are usually medically managed, cornerstone being diuretic therapy until they exhibit signs of heart failure when they're referred for surgical closure. Obviously, if the neonates with VSDs have other congenital defects such as detransposition or a common arterial trunk or arch obstruction or tetralogy of flow with pulmonary atresia, we go ahead and close these VSDs in the first week of life. And these are pictures I've borrowed from uh, uh, Dr. Mavrudis' uh, uh, paper. But at Boston Children's, we do most of these VSD closures through a, a sub-xiphoid incision. We used to use a book wall to retractor, but we're actually using the retractor that was presented at this conference by Dr. Thomas Matthew from Trivandrum. It's a very cost-effective retractor that hoists up the whole uh, sternum cephalad so you can see the aorta SVC really well with just incising the lower third of the sternum. And that's how we approach a majority of the VSDs. And the in skin incision is usually about three to five centimeters. And we directly cannulate the SVC aorta, IVC, and to great plegia. Well, this uh, cartoon shows the exposure through a right atriotomy, again, reflecting the anterior and septal leaf of the tricuspid valve. You can visualize the VSD fairly well. And uh, just be cognizant of the conduction system here. And uh, we still close it the, uh, the way Dr. Castaneda had taught us with interrupted uh, uh, ethabon sutures that we place circumferential around the defect, <coughs> pass all these sutures through a Dacron patch or an autologous pericardial patch, lower it, and uh, um, tie them down. Obviously, a lot of talks about subaortic VSDs. Uh, the main thing here being uh, the proximity uh, to the uh, semilunar valves, and sometimes you can have a real lack or deficient conal septum. In those cases, you really have to be careful where you place your stitches. Uh, this uh, cartoon shows an approach through the uh, transpulmonary approach, a longitudinal incision of the pulmonary artery, and again, uh, interrupted sutures to close it. Again, in cross-section, how you can anchor these uh, uh, felt pledgets. Uh, the one thing I found useful as uh, uh, I've been doing these is to actually uh, develop a space between the aortic root and the pulmonary root and exteriorize these pledgets. I think that works just as well. Uh, Whenever there's any question of uh, uh, aortic uh, right corner cusp prolapse and aortic insufficiency, it's paramount that you uh, fix that as well. So the best way to do that is through an aortotomy. You can close the VSD and then resuspend the right corner cusp uh, using Yakub or Trussler's techniques. Uh, there are several ways you can improve your exposure while you're starting out. I think one of the things that we saw in this robotic uh, uh, VSD closure was 
you know, detach the tricuspid valve. And we've studied this long term, and it doesn't adversely affect the tricuspid valve function. Just circumferentially detach the valve. The one thing this cartoon doesn't show is leave a small rim of tricuspid valve tissue there so you can reattach it uh, without distorting the valve. And once you detach it, it's a, it's a chip shot. You see it very well. And the other thing, if you're not comfortable doing a circumferential detachment, is just make a, long, a radial incision down the uh, septal leaflet and uh, flip the cordal tissue cephalat and, uh, again, uh, exposes this area well. Once you're done with the VST closure, just close the radial incision in a continuous fashion. Uh, muscular VSTs are more tricky. I think this is where uh, the uh, perventricular device closures will be very helpful because surgically uh, trying to find these can be challenging at times. Again, the nomenclature, uh, the apical muscular VSTs, the mid-muscular, and the anterior muscular, these are the three things we'll focus on. Usually these things are not there by isolation. They're usually present with something else, like a mid-muscular and an anterior muscular uh, VST right where the moderator band is. So you can be fooled by the size of the uh, uh, defects. The shunt might be pretty big, but when you look at it, it might be small. That's because the defects are quite large. In these cases, sometimes you can use pledged stitches to uh, tack the tr uh, moderator band down to obliterate part of the defects and then patch it, or just you can use just one large patch to go across the entire defect. And sometimes you'll see uh, inlet muscular VSDs uh, in addition to a membranous defect, the key thing here is remember the conduction system penetrating bundle is in this uh, lip of muscle, so don't divide it because uh, you will get a uh, uh, complete heart block. And the apical muscular VSTs to me are the most difficult ones to find uh, through the tricuspid valve, and the, the one uh, incision that does help is uh, a, a, a apical right ventriculotomy, and it's amazing how babies tolerate these just fine, make a small incision there, Usually there's a lot of trabeculation, so you have to uh, be precise in uh, identifying the boundaries of the VSD before you close it. And people have proposed uh, several ways to uh, uh, identify these if you're having a difficult time with the trabeculations, which is uh, we've done these in certain instances where we take the babies to the cat lab before, have them park a guide wire in the apical muscular VSD. So you close the membranous defect like you're doing uh, through the tricuspid valve and uh, then open the apex of the RV, you see the guide wire, you know where the VSD is, and that would be easy to close. So the contemporaneous approaches are a combination. I think surgical repair has been the cornerstone of therapy for these septal defects, but I think as we heard in this session, more and more it's the combined surgical, perventricular, interventional approaches that are uh, um, gaining speed. And I'll also present some data from our minimally invasive cardioport research that uh, we're doing in our department to help close these septal defects. The hybrid approaches, uh, like we've seen, uh, the perventricular approaches are great. Uh, again, uh, you close the uh, membranous defect uh, uh, with the uh, patch, and then the apical muscular VSDs, you can approach it uh, uh, through the RV and purse string suture and uh, uh, close them with the device. Uh, some of the uh, purely interventional approaches where you do it from the uh, uh, groin can be uh, uh, performed in older children. Obviously, our cath lab cutoff is about 10 kilos. And uh, uh, if they're smaller and if they're muscular, we can do it like the group from Russia presented through a sub forward incision. And we've had excellent results with muscular defects, and that's who we reserve this type of approach for. We've been hesitant to do it for membranous defects. Uh, uh, for two reasons. One is uh, uh, heart block. We've, uh, uh, there's several reports of heart blocks with these devices, and also, two, uh, we didn't want to uh, distort the uh, support mechanism for the tricuspid valve. And one of the uh, research groups in our department has developed this uh, minimally invasive echo-assisted repair, basically uh, introducing uh, a patch through the LV apex and a, a nitinol anchoring device through the LV. Again, all of this done with an echo guidance. This is what the anchoring device looks like. This is the patch material. And uh, uh, this is an ex vivo demonstration, this column of slides. And uh, this is an in vivo demonstration showing it in real time three dimensional echo. I'll sh show you a video of how this works. This was done in a pig model. So basically this was uh, data presented by Nick Vasilia from our department. Uh, Basically, it shows uh, uh, how we create a VSD in these uh, porcine hearts uh, using a coring device. 
And once that's done, we demonstrate the subtle defect. And uh, this is the three-dimensional view. This is subtracting out uh, the rest of the heart. And then we introduce the patch. Uh, with, and then the anchoring devices is going to come and anchor these their little night null anchors with preset memory. And once this is fixed in place, uh, uh, the frame that holds the patch is withdrawn. and then an echo confirmation that uh, we've obliterated the shunt. The other uh, avenue we're looking at, uh, obviously these are not for isolated BSDs. These are babies that we're dealing with. We're doing 10 other things like aortic valvotomy, mitral valvotomy, and if we can simplify one aspect of this operation that includes several components, and one of them is a cardioport. It's a device with a series of transparent detachable bulbs and an inner compartment that houses a uh, four to five millimeter telescope for imaging and also a working channel uh, to introduce instruments and do the repair. Obviously, it has a va uh, fluid air purging system to de-air. This is introduced through a purse string suture in the heart. And uh, uh, the next slide show our preliminary data with using this to close uh, septal defects in the atrium. Basically, this is a cardioport that's introduced uh, through the atrium. You can see the septal defect, and uh, this is a, a device that's uh, deployed under direct vision. So, uh, so anyway, let, let's look at contemporary results. I think with surgical closure, we have excellent results. Mortality rate for isolated septal defects is way, uh, it's 0.05%. Residual shunts requiring reoperation, again, are very low. The few percentage are for defects in association with other congenital heart defects, such as double outlet, right ventricle, et cetera. And pacemaker need for, uh, uh, after surgical repair of septal defects, again, is uh, about uh, one to three uh, percent. The device closure results are also very, very good. Uh, there is some uh, late occurrence of congenital heart block, as we've seen uh, from an earlier presentation. Uh, in some series, it's as high as two to eight percent. And we've actually seen these go away when you remove the device. And there is some uh, residual shunts left in these babies, but they're also small. They, at intermediate term follow-up, at 12 months, most of them have uh, gone away. I think the future direction is some uh, combination of beating heart VSD closure, you know, combination of surgical and device closure as a part of a more complex case, and uh, uh, obviously newer technology for low-profile devices to avoid AV valve distortion, and in cases of uh, juxta arterial or subaortic VSDs, a device that's not going to distort the semilunar valve. And uh, also using this 3D uh, echo imaging to develop uh, uh, personalized VSD closure devices. Maybe this is something we can print in the lab and uh, uh, customize it for the type of defect. And again, uh, bearing in mind where the cordal attachments are or the semilunar valve is. And I think that's the uh, future. Uh, in, these, uh, in the management of these defects. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, any questions from Odia? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. We'll close, no? Close oh. the session, yeah. You have a question? No. Go ahead. No. Okay, we, uh, now we uh, close this session. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.